Zochen Wiley R D Zog's Chen or Great Perfection Sanskrit Adiyoga is a tradition of teachings in Tibetan Buddhism aimed at discovering and continuing in the natural primordial state of being It is a central teaching of the Nyingma school of Tibetan Buddhism and of Bon In these traditions Zochen is the highest and most definitive path of the nine vehicles to liberation Topic <inaudible> Etymology <inaudible> Zochen is composed of two terms. R. D. Zogs, perfection. Chen, great the term initially referred to the highest perfection of deity visualization, after the visualization has been dissolved and one rests in the natural state of the innately luminous and pure mind. In the 10th and 11th century, Zochen emerged as a separate tantric vehicle in the Nyingma tradition, used synonymously with the Sanskrit term ati yoga, primordial yoga, according to Van Shaikh, in the 8th century Tantra Sarvabuddhisama Yoga. There seems to be an association of Anuyoga with yogic bliss, and Adiyoga with a realization of the nature of reality via that bliss. This ties in with the three stages of deity yoga described in a work attributed to Pamamsambhava, development, kai, perfection, dzog, and great perfection, zochen. According to the 14th Dalai Lama, the term zochen may be a rendering of the Sanskrit term mahasandhi. According to Anyan Rinpoche, the true meaning is that the student must take the entire path as an interconnected entity of equal importance. Zochen is perfect because it is an all-inclusive totality that leads to middle-way realization, in avoiding the two extremes of nihilism and eternalism. It classifies outer, inner and secret teachings, which are only separated by the cognitive construct of words and completely encompasses Tibetan Buddhist wisdom. It can be as easy as taking bodhicitta as the method, and failing this is missing an essential element to accomplishment. Origins and history Topic Traditional accounts Topic Nyingma tradition According to the Nyingma tradition, the primordial Buddha Samantabhadra taught Dzogchen to the Buddha Varasattva, who transmitted it to the first human lineage holder, the Indian Garab Dorje Florida. 55 CE. According to tradition, the Dzogchen teachings were brought to Tibet by Pamamsambhava in the late 8th and early 9th centuries. He was aided by two Indian masters, Vimalamitra and Virokana. According to the Nyingma tradition, they transmitted the Dzogchen teachings in three distinct series, namely the Mind series Space series and Secret Instruction series According to tradition, these teachings were concealed shortly afterward, during the 9th century, when the Tibetan Empire disintegrated. From the 10th century forward, innovations in the Nyingma tradition were largely introduced historically as revelations of these concealed scriptures, known as terma. Topic. Bon tradition In the 14th century, Lodan Nyingpo revealed a terma containing the story of Tanpa Shenrab Miwash. According to this terma, Dzogchen originated with the founder of the Bon tradition, Tanpa Shenrab, who lived 18,000 years ago, ruling the kingdom of Tazak, which supposedly lay west of Tibet. He transmitted these teachings to the region of Zhang Zheng, the far western part of the Tibetan cultural world. The earliest Bon literature only exists in Tibetan manuscripts, the earliest of which can be dated to the 11th century. The Bon tradition also has a threefold classification, namely Dzogchen, A Tri, and the Zhang Zheng Oral Lineage Zhang Zheng Nyeng Yu. <laughs> Historical origins and development Tibetan Empire 7th -9th century. The written history of Tibet begins in the early 7th century, when the Tibetan kingdoms were united, and Tibet expanded throughout large parts of Central Asia. Songsen Gampo conquered the kingdom of Zhangzheng in western Tibet, dominated Nepal, and threatened the Chinese dominance in strategically important areas of the Silk Road. 
He is also credited with the adoption of a writing system, the establishment of a legal code, and the introduction of Buddhism, though it probably only played a minor role. Tri Songdetsen adopted Buddhism, but also maintained the martial traditions of the Tibetan Empire. The Tibetans controlled Dunhuang, a major Buddhist center, from the 780s until the mid-9th century. Halfway through the 9th century the Tibetan Empire collapsed. Royal patronage of Buddhism was lost, leading to a decline of Buddhism in Tibet, only to recover with the renaissance of Tibetan culture occurring from the late 10th century to the early 12th century, known as the later dissemination of Buddhism. Topic: <laughs> Traditional classification of Dzogchen texts, 9th 14th century. Traditionally, the early Dzogchen literature is categorized into three categories, which more or less reflect the historical development of Dzogchen. Semd Wiley, Sem's SDE, SKT, Chittavarga, the Mind Series. This category contains the earliest Dzogchen teachings. Tradition attributes them to Padmasmabhava and his consorts, and dates them to the 8th century, but they first appeared in the 9th century, written by Tibetans. Longda Wiley, Klong Sde, Skt, Abhyantaravarga, The Series of Space, this series reflects the developments of the 11th-14th centuries, when new Buddhist techniques and doctrines were introduced into Tibet. Mengaj Wiley, Man Ngag Sde, Skt, Upadeshavarga, The Series of Secret Oral Instructions, also known as Seminal Heart or Nyingthig, also reflects the developments of the 11th-14th centuries, this series has overshadowed the other two. This division focuses on two aspects of practice, Kada Treksho, the cutting through of primordial purity, and Londrub Togal, the direct crossing of spontaneous presence. Origins and Dunhuang texts 8th-10th century According to Sam Van Shaikh, who studies early Dzogchen manuscripts from the Dunhuang Caves, the Dzogchen texts are influenced by earlier Mahayana sources such as the Lankavatara Sutra and Indian Buddhist Tantras with their teaching of emptiness and luminosity, which in Dzogchen texts are presented as ever purity and spontaneous presence Sam Van Shaikh also notes that there is a discrepancy between the histories as presented by the traditions, and the picture that emerges from those manuscripts. There is no record of Dzogchen as a separate tradition or vehicle prior to the 10th century, although the terms Adiyoga as a higher practice than Tantra and Dzogchen do appear in 8th and 9th century Indian Tantric texts. There is also no independent attestation of the existence of any separate traditions or lineages under the name of Dzogchen outside of Tibet, and it may be a unique Tibetan teaching, drawing on multiple influences, including both native Tibetan non Buddhist beliefs and Chinese and Indian Buddhist teachings. According to Van Shaikh, the term Adiyoga first appeared in the 8th century, in an Indian tantra called Sarvabuddhasamayoga. In this text, Anuyoga is the stage of yogic bliss, while Adiyoga is the stage of the realization of the nature of reality. According to Van Shaikh, this fits with the three stages of deity yoga as described in a work attributed to Pamamsambhava, development Kai, perfection DZOG, and great perfection Dzogchen. Adiyoga here is not a vehicle, but a stage or aspect of yogic practice. In Tibetan sources, until the 10th century Adiyoga is characterized as a mode tshul, or a view. Lta ba, which is to be applied within deity yoga, according to Van Shaikh, the concept of Dzogchen, great perfection, first appeared as the culmination of the meditative practice of deity yoga around the 8th century. The term Dzogchen was likely taken from the Guayagarbhatantra. This tantra describes, as other tantras, how in the creation stage one generates a visualization of a deity and its mandala. This is followed by the completion stage, in which one dissolves the deity and the mandala into oneself, merging oneself with the deity. In the Guayagarbha Tantra and some other tantras, there follows a stage called Rd Zogs Chen, in which one rests in the natural state of the innately luminous and pure mind. In the 9th and 10th centuries, deity yoga was contextualized in Dzogchen in terms of nonconceptuality, non duality, and the spontaneous presence of the enlightened state. Some Dunhuang texts dated at the 10th century show the first signs of a developing nine vehicles system. Nevertheless, Anuyoga and Adiyoga are still regarded then as modes of Mahayoga practice. 
Only in the 11th century came Adiyoga to be threatened as a separate vehicle, at least in the newly emerging Nyingma tradition. Nevertheless, even in the 13th century and later, the idea of Adiyoga as a vehicle was controversial in other Buddhist schools. Van Shaikh quotes Sakya Pandita as writing, in his Distinguishing the Three Vows, if one understands this tradition properly, then the view of Adiyoga Tawa wisdom and not a vehicle. <laughs> Early Dzogchen, the Mind Series 9 -th century. Most of the early Dzogchen literature, which are claimed to be translations, are original compositions from a much later date than the 8th century. According to Germano, the Dzogchen tradition first appeared in the first half of the 9th century, with a series of short texts attributed to Indian saints. They were codified into a canon of 18 texts which were referred to as mind-oriented Sems Fiogs, and later became known as Mind Series. Semsda. The Mind Series reflect the teachings of early Dzogchen, which rejected all forms of practice, and asserted that striving for liberation would simply create more delusion. One has simply to recognize the nature of one's own mind, which is naturally empty stong pa, luminous odd gsal ba, and pure. According to Germano, its characteristic language, which is marked by naturalism and negation, is already pronounced in some Indian tantras. Nevertheless, these texts are still inextricably bound up with tantric Mahayoga, with its visualizations of deities and mandals, and complex initiations. During the 9th and 10th centuries, these texts, which represent the dominant form of the tradition in the 9th and 10th centuries, were gradually transformed into full fledged tantras, culminating in the Kuleraja Tantra in the last half of the 10th or the first half of the 11th century. According to Germano, this tantra was historically perhaps the most important and widely quoted of all Dzogchen scriptures. Topic: <transformation>, Transformation, the Space and Instruction Series, 11th-14th century. Early Dzogchen was completely transformed in the 11th century, with the renaissance of Tibetan culture occurring from the late 10th century to the early 12th century, known as the later dissemination of Buddhism. New techniques and doctrines were introduced from India, resulting in new schools of Tibetan Buddhism, and radical new developments in Dzogchen doctrine and practice, with a growing emphasis on meditative practice. The older Bon and Nyingma traditions incorporated these new influences through the process of treasure revelation. Especially the Yogini Tantras were influential, involving horrific imagery and violent rituals, erotic imagery, and sexual and somatic practices. These influences are reflected in the rise of subtle body representations and practices, new pantheons of wrathful and erotic Buddhas, increasingly antinomium rhetorics, and a focus on death motifs. These influences were incorporated in several movements such as the Secret Cycle, Ji Sang Score, Ultra Pith, Yang Tig. Brahmin's tradition, Bram Z. Lugs, the Space Class series, and especially the Instruction Class series, which culminated in the Seminal Heart, Smying Thig, which emerged in the late 11th and early 12th century. The Seminal Heart belongs to the Instruction series. The main texts of the Instruction series are the so called 17 Tantras and the two Seminal Heart. Collections, namely the Bai Ma Snying Thig, Vima Nying Thig Seminal Heart of Vimalamitra, and the Mkha Gross Nying Thig, Kondro Nying Thig Seminal Heart of the Dakini. The Seminal Heart of Vimalamitra is attributed to Vimalamitra, but was largely composed by their discoverers in the 11th and 12th century. The Seminal Heart of the Dakini was produced by Sultram Dorje Tshul Krims Rdorje 1291-1315-17. The seminal heart teachings became the dominant Dzogchen teachings, but was also criticized by conservative strands within the Nyingma school. The most important Nyingma of the 12th century, Nyangral Nyingma Ozer Nyang Ralnyi Ma Odzir, 1136-1204, developed his crown pith to reassert the older traditions in a new form. His writings, which were also presented as revelations, are marked by a relative absence of Yogini Tantra influence, and transcend the prescriptions of specific practices, as well as the rhetoric of violence, sexuality and transgression. 
Topic: <laughs> Longchunpa's Seven Treasuries, 14th century. A pivotal figure in the history of Dzogchen was Longchunpa Rabjampa (1308–1364), possibly 1369. He systematized the seminal heart teachings and other collections of texts that were circulating at the time in Tibet. In the Seven Treasuries (MD Zodbdun), the Trilogy of Natural Freedom, Rang Grol Score Gsum, and the Trilogy of Natural Ease (Ngal Gso Score Gsum). Longchunpa refined the terminology and interpretations, and integrated the seminal heart teachings with broader Mahayana literature. Malcolm Smith notes that Longchunpa's T Shig Don M D Zod, the Treasury of Subjects, was preceded by several other texts by other authors dealing with the same topics. Smith mentions the 12th century text, The Eleven Subjects of the Great Perfection, by N. Y. I. Bum. This itself was derived from the eighth and final chapter of the commentary to the String of Pearls Tantra, N. Y. I. Bum's Eleven Subjects is the basis for Longchunpa's Treasury of Subjects, as well as Rigzin Gautam's the Oral Lineage of Vimalamitra, from the Gongpa Zangthal, according to Smith, NYI Bums, Eleven Subjects, provided the outline upon which Longchunpa's Treasury of Subjects was based, using the general sequence of citations, and even copying or reworking entire passages. According to Smith, NYI Bums, Eleven Subjects, was transmitted in a close circle of disciples, with very little outside contact, whereas Longchunpa's Treasury of Subjects contains responses to 14th century scholastic objections to Dzogchen. Topic: <laughs> Later Termas. In subsequent centuries more editions followed including the Profound Dharma of Self-Liberation through the Intention of the Peaceful and Wrathful Ones. Kar Gling Gkhro by Karma Lingpa, 1326 to 1386, popularly known as Karma Lingpa's Peaceful and Wrathful Ones, which includes the two texts of the Bar Du Thosgrol, the Tibetan Book of the Dead. Other important termas are the Penetrating Wisdom, Di Gong's Pa Zhang Thao, revealed by Rinzen Godam, Rig Di Zin Rgodl Dem, 1337 to 1409, and the nucleus of Adi's profound meaning. R. D. Zog's Pa Chen Po A T Zabdan Snying Po by Terdak Lingpa G T E R B D A G Gling Pa, 1646 to 1714. Particularly influential of these later revelations are the works of Jigma Lingpa, 1730 to 1798. His Longchun Nying Thig, Klong Chen Snying Thig, The Heart Essence of the Vast Expanse, or The Seminal Heart of the Great Matrix is a hidden teaching from Pamam Sambhava which was revealed by Jigma Lingpa. The Longchun Nyingthig is said to be the essence of the Vima Nyingthig and Khandro Nyingthig, the early Nyingthig, and has become known as the later Nyingthig. It is one of the most widely practiced teachings in the Nyingmapa school. Patrol Rinpoche wrote down Jigma Lingpa's preliminary practices into a book called The Words of My Perfect Teacher. Modern times In the early 20th century the first publications on Tibetan Buddhism appeared in the West. An early publication on Dzogchen was the so-called Tibetan Book of the Dead, edited by W. Y. Evans Wentz, which became highly popular, but contains many mistakes in translation and interpretation. Dzogchen has been popularized in the Western world by the Tibetan diaspora, starting with the exile of 1959. Well-known teachers include Sogyal Rinpoche and Namkai Norbu. The 14th Dalai Lama is also a qualified Dzogchen teacher. Chogyam Trungpa coined the term Maha Ati for Dzogchen, a master of the Kagyu and Nyingma lineages of Tibetan Vajrayana Buddhism. He generally preferred to introduce Sanskrit rather than Tibetan terms to his students and felt Maha Ati was the closest equivalent for Dzogchen, although he acknowledged it was an unorthodox choice. The coinage does not follow the Sandhi rules which would be rendered as Mahati. This serves as an indication of its pedigree as a calc. <laughs> Kagyu and Gelugpa 
Dzogchen has also been taught and practiced in the Kagyu lineage, beginning with the third Karmapa, Rangjing Dorje (1284–1339). The Drikang Kagyu also have a tradition of Dzogchen teachings. The Yangjob Dzogchen, Lozang Gyatso, Fifth Dalai Lama (1617–1682), Tubtan Gyatso, Thirteenth Dalai Lama (1876–1933), and Tenzin Gyatso, Fourteenth Dalai Lama (present). All Gelugpas are also noted Dzogchen masters, although their adoption of the practice of Dzogchen has been a source of controversy among more conservative members of the Gelug tradition. Conceptual background Tibetan Buddhism developed five main schools. The Madhyamika philosophy obtained a central position in the Nyingma, Kagyu, Sakya and Gelugpa schools. The Jonang school, which until recently was thought to be extinct, developed a different interpretation of ultimate truth. Dzogchen texts use unique terminology to describe the Dzogchen view. Some of these terms deal with the different elements and features of the mind. The generic term for consciousness is Shis Pa, and includes the six sense consciousnesses. Different forms of Shis Pa include Yishis Jnana, pristine consciousness, and Shis Rab prajna, wisdom. According to Sam Van Shake, two significant terms used in Dzogchen literature is the ground and Gnosis which represent the ontological and gnosiological aspects of the nirvanic state, respectively. Dzogchen literature also describes nirvana as the expanse klong or, dbeings, or the true expanse chose dbeings, Sanskrit, dharmadhatu. The term dharmakaya is also often associated with these terms in Dzogchen, as explained by Tulku Urjian. Dharmakaya is like space. You cannot say there is any limit to space in any direction. No matter how far you go, you never reach a point where space stops and that is the end of space. Space is infinite in all directions, so is dharmakaya. Dharmakaya is all-pervasive and totally infinite, beyond any confines or limitations. This is so for the dharmakaya of all Buddhas. There is no individual dharmakaya for each Buddha, as there is no individual space for each country. According to Malcolm Smith, the Dzogchen view is also based on the Indian Buddhist Buddha nature doctrine of the Tathagatagarbha Sutras. According to the 14th Dalai Lama the ground is the Buddha nature, the nature of mind which is emptiness. According to Rinpoche Thrangu, Rangjing Dorje (1284–1339), the third Karmapa Lama, head of the Karma Kagyu and Nyingma lineage holder, also stated that the ground is Buddha nature. According to Rinpoche Thrangu, whether one does Mahamudra or Dzogchen practice, Buddha nature is the foundation from which both of these meditations develop. Topic: <laughs> Basis. A key concept in Dzogchen is the basis, ground or primordial state Tibetan, Gzhi, Sanskrit, Stana, also called the general ground or the original ground The basis is the original state. Before realization produced Buddhas and nonrealization produced sentient beings. It is a temporal and unchanging and yet it is noetically potent, giving rise to mind, delusion and wisdom. The basis is also associated with the term dharmada. The basis has three qualities: essence, purity, which refers to emptiness, shunyata, stong pa nyid; nature, natural perfection, lhun grub, also translated spontaneous presence, which also refers to luminosity or clarity, gsal; compassion, karuna, thugs rje, the imminent presence of the ground in all appearances. The text. An aspirational prayer for the ground, path and result," defines the three aspects of the basis thus Because its essence is empty, it is free from the limit of eternalism Because its nature is luminous, it is free from the extreme of nihilism Because its compassion is unobstructed, it is the ground of the manifold manifestations Moreover, the basis is associated with the primordial or original Buddhahood, also called Samantabhadra, which is said to be beyond time itself and hence Buddhahood is not something to be gained, but an act of recognizing what is already imminent in all sentient beings. Likewise, this view of the basis stems from the Indian Buddha nature theory. Other terms used to describe the basis include unobstructed ma gags pa, universal kun kayab, and omnipresent. Topic: 
Topic Rigpa. Rigpa (SK Vidya) knowledge is a central concept in Dzogchen, which means unconfused knowledge of the basis that is its own state. It is reflexively self-aware primordial wisdom, which is self-reflexively aware of itself as unbounded wholeness. The analogy given by Dzogchen masters is that one's true nature is like a mirror which reflects with complete openness, but is not affected by the reflections, or like a crystal ball that takes on the color of the material on which it is placed without itself being changed. The knowledge that ensues from recognizing this mirror like clarity, which cannot be found by searching nor identified, is called Rigpa. According to Alexander Berzin, there are three aspects of Rigpa. The essential nature of Rigpa, primal purity. Rigpa is primordially without stains, both being self-void and other void. The influencing nature of Rigpa, the manner in which Rigpa influences others. Rigpa is responsiveness thugs RJE, compassion. It responds effortlessly and spontaneously to others with compassion. The functional nature of Rigpa, Rigpa effortlessly and spontaneously establishes appearances. LHUN grub, as Berzin notes, all of the good qualities yan tan of a Buddha are already are innate LHAN skies to Rigpa, which means that they arise simultaneously with each moment of Rigpa, and primordial ma, in the sense of having no beginning, Sam Van Shaikh translates Rigpa as Gnosis, which he glosses as a form of awareness aligned to the nirvanic state. He notes that other definitions of Rigpa include free from elaborations, SRPOS brawl, non-conceptual. RTOG med and transcendent of the intellect blow dos it is also often paired with emptiness as in the contraction rig stong nasus emptiness john w pettit notes that rigpa is seen as beyond affirmation and negation acceptance and rejection and therefore it is known as natural ma bcos pa and effortless rtsol med once recognized because of this, Dzogchen is also known as the pinnacle and final destination of all paths. Ma Rigpa Ma Rigpa is the opposite of Rigpa or knowledge. Ma Rigpa is ignorance or unawareness, the failure to recognize the nature of the basis. An important theme in Dzogchen texts is explaining how ignorance arises from the basis or dharmata, which is associated with yi shis or pristine consciousness. Automatically arising unawareness exists because the basis is seen having a natural cognitive potentiality and luminosity which is the ground for samsara and nirvana. When consciousness fails to recognize that all phenomena arise as the creativity of the nature of mind and misses its own luminescence or does not recognize its own face, sentient beings arise instead of Buddhas. As explained by Tulku Urjian, In the case of an ignorant sentient being the mind is called empty cognizance suffused with ignorance marigpa. The mind of all the Buddhas is called empty cognizance suffused with awareness rigpa. According to Vimalamitra's illuminating lamp, delusion arises because sentient beings lapse towards external mentally apprehended objects. This external grasping is then said to produce sentient beings out of dependent origination. This dualistic conceptualizing process which leads to samsara is termed manas as well as awareness moving away from the ground. Topic: <laughs> Immanence and distinction. According to Sam Van Shaikh, there is a certain tension in Dzogchen thought as in other forms of Buddhism between the idea that samsara and nirvana are immanent within each other and yet are still different. In texts such as the Longchun Ningtig for example, the basis and rigpa are presented as being intrinsically innate to the individual mind. The great perfection tantra of the expanse of Samantabhadra's wisdom states, if you think that he who is called the heart essence of all Buddhas, the primordial Lord, the noble victorious one, Samantabhadra is contained in a mindstream separate from the ocean-like realm of sentient beings, then this is a nihilistic view in which samsara and nirvana remain unconnected. Likewise, Longchunpa 12th century, writes in his Illuminating Sunlight, 
Every type of experiential content belonging to samsara and nirvana has, as its very basis, a natural state that is a spontaneously present Buddha a dimension of purity and perfection, that is perfect by nature. This natural state is not created by a profound Buddha nor by a clever sentient being. Independent of causality, causes did not produce it and conditions can not make it perish. This state is one of self-existing wakefulness, defying all that words can describe, in a way that also transcends the reach of the intellect and thoughts. It is within the non-arising vastness of such a basic natural state that all phenomena belonging to samsara and nirvana are, essentially and without any exception, a state of Buddha—purity and perfection. This lack of difference between these two states, their non-dual nature, corresponds with the idea that change from one to another doesn't happen due to an ordinary process of causation but is an instantaneous and perfect self-recognition of what is already innately there. According to John W. Pettit, this idea has its roots in Indian texts such as Nagarjuna's Mulamadhyamakakarika, which states that samsara and nirvana are not separate and that there is no difference between the doer, the going, and the going to, i.e. the ground, path and fruit. In spite of this emphasis on immanence, Dzogchen texts do indicate a subtle difference between terms associated with delusion kun gzhi or alaya, sems or mind and terms associated with full enlightenment dharmakaya and rigpa. The alaya and alayavijnana are associated with karmic imprints vasana of the mind and with mental afflictions klesa. The alaya for habits is the basis GZHI along with ignorance marigpa, which includes all sorts of obscuring habits and grasping tendencies. These terms stem from Indian Yogacara texts, such as the Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Nature of Nirvana Koppel notes that although later Nyingma authors such as Mipham attempted to harmonize the view of Dzogchen with Madhyamaka, the earlier Nyingma author Rongzam Choki Zongpo did not. Rongzam held that the views of sutra such as Madhyamaka were inferior to that of Tantra. In contrast, the 14th Dalai Lama, in his book Dzogchen, concludes that Madhyamaka and Dzogchen come down to the same point. The view of reality obtained through Madhyamaka philosophy and the Dzogchen view of Rigpa can be regarded as identical. With regard to the practice in these traditions, however, at the initial stages there do seem certain differences in practice and emphasis. Teachings and practice Dzogchen is a secret teaching emphasizing the Rigpa view. It is a secret from those who are incapable of receiving it. The student can properly receive it with direct in-person realization under a guru's instruction. It is accessible to all, however, it is generally considered an advanced practice because safety from generating an incorrect view necessitates preliminary practices with a teacher's empowerment. Dzogchen teachings emphasize naturalness, spontaneity and simplicity. Although Dzogchen is portrayed as being distinct from Tantra, it has incorporated many concepts and practices from Tantric Buddhism. It embraces a widely varied array of traditions, that range from a systematic rejection of all tantric practices, to a full incorporation of tantric practices. <laughs> Three principles The seminal heart of Vimalamitra epitomized the Dzogchen teaching in three principles, known as the Three Statements of Garab Dorje they give in short the development a student has to undergo Direct introduction to one's own nature tib, go rang thog tu sprad pa, namely rigpa Not remaining in doubt concerning this unique state tib, thag gcig thog tu bikad pa Continuing to remain in this state tib, g deng grol thog tu bca pa, in subsequent centuries these teachings were expanded, most notably in the Longchun Nyingthig by Jigma Lingpa His systematization is the most widely used Dzogchen teaching nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> Structure of practice Topic. Anthology of practices 
The Dzogchen teachings consist of vast anthologies of practices presented as preliminary and auxiliary contemplative techniques, including standard Buddhist meditation techniques and tantra practices which have been integrated into Dzogchen, Longchenpa, in "...finding comfort and ease in meditation." BSAMGTANNGALGSO, the second text of the Trilogy of Natural Ease NGALGSO score GSUM, and its auto-commentary the Xing RTA RNAM DAG, uses the standard triad of meditative experiences NIAMS to structure the text and the practices, bliss BDE BA, radiance, clarity GSAL BA, and non-conceptuality this triad is also presented as preliminaries, main practice, and concluding phase. The preliminaries are further divided into the general preliminaries on impermanence and renunciation of cyclic existence, which corresponds to the Theravada, the special preliminaries on compassion and the engendering of compassionate motivation, which corresponds with the Mahayana, the supreme preliminaries, consisting of the generation phase, perfection phase and guru yoga, this systematization contextualized the system in terms of Tibetan Buddhism, while simultaneously relegating these preliminaries to a lower status, while emphasizing their necessity. Longchunpa couples meditation with guru yoga in these preliminaries, the teachings based on the Longchun Nyingthig are divided into preliminary practices and main practices. Alexander Berzin explicitly mentions meditative practices as a preliminary of the main practice. Topic: <inaudible> General Overview. A general overview gives the following: Preliminary practices. Initial empowerment, according to Sokni Rinpoche, Dzogchen practice starts with receiving empowerment. Nandro, general or outer, and special or inner preliminary practices, which prepare one for the main practice. Great perfection practice. Further empowerment, receiving an empowerment -bang, initiation, and keeping the vows conferred at that time. This activates our Buddha mind, by consciously generating a state of mind that is accompanied by understanding. Supreme preliminary practices, Jigma Lingpa's Ru Shan and Espiang Ba, practice of the three samadhis. Main practice, which consists of trekcho, breakthrough, recognizing rigpa, togol, thought r g a l, leap ahead, spontaneous presence, which is the stabilization of rigpa and compassionate action. Concluding phase. Topic: <laughs> Preliminary practices. The nandro, preliminary practices, consist of outer preliminaries and inner preliminaries. <inaudible> Initial empowerment According to Sokni Rinpoche, before one starts with the Dzogchen practices empowerment is necessary. This plants the seeds of realization within the present body, speech and mind. Empowerment invests us with the ability to be liberated into the already present ground." The practices bring the seeds to maturation, resulting in the qualities of enlightened body, speech and mind. <laughs> General or outer preliminaries The outer preliminaries are as follows Appreciating our precious human rebirths Contemplating death and impermanence Contemplating the faults of samsara Contemplating karmic cause and effect and the possibility of gaining liberation from it Contemplating the benefits of liberation Building and maintaining a good relation with a spiritual teacher Topic. Special or inner preliminaries The inner preliminaries are as follows Taking refuge, cultivating bodhicitta and the far reaching attitudes, Tib, Far Bayan, Skt. Paramita, practicing Varasattva recitation, for purification of the gross obstacles, practicing mandala offerings, in which we develop generosity and strengthen our enlightenment building network of positive force, making kusali offerings of chad, in which we imagine cutting up and giving away our ordinary bodies. Practicing Guru Yoga, in which we recognize and focus on Buddha nature in our spiritual mentors and in ourselves. 
Topic: <laughs> Great Perfection Practices. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Empowerment. According to Berzin, receiving empowerment D -bang, initiation, and keeping the vows conferred at that time is a necessary step to move on to the main practice. This activates our Buddha mind, by consciously generating a state of mind that is accompanied by understanding. Alexander Berzin further notes, In Gelug, the conscious experience is some level of blissful awareness of voidness. In the non-Gelug systems, it is focus on Buddha nature in our tantric masters and in us, with some level of understanding of Buddha nature. In Dzogchen, it is focused specifically on the basis three aspects of Rigpa as Buddha nature factors in our tantric masters and in us. <laughs> Supreme preliminary practices With the influence of Tantra, and the systematizations of Longchunpa, the main Dzogchen practices came to be preceded by preliminary meditative practices, in the text, "...finding comfort and ease in the nature of mind," Sems Nyidngalgso, which is part of the Trilogy of Natural Ease Ngalgso score GSUM. Longchunpa arranges 141 contemplative practices, split into three sections, Exoteric Buddhism 92, Tantra 92, and The Great Perfection 27. Most of these practices are technique-free. The typical Buddhist meditations are relegated to the preliminary phase, while the main meditative practices are typical. Direct approaches. Longchunpa includes the perfection phase techniques of channels, winds, and nuclei into the main and concluding phases. The concluding phase includes discussions of new contemplative techniques, which aid the practice of the main phase. The great perfection practices, as described by Jigma Lingpa, consist of preliminary practices, specific for the great perfection practice, and the main practice. Jigma Lingpa, Ru Shan and Esbiang Ba Jigma Lingpa mentions two kinds of preliminary practices, core das Ru Shan Dbye Ba, making a gap between samsara and nirvana, and Esbiang Ba, Ru Shan is a series of visualization and recitation exercises, derived from the seminal heart tradition. The name reflects the dualism of the distinctions between mind and insight, alaya and dharmakaya. Longchunpa places this practice in the enhancement Bogs D. Byung section of his concluding phase. It describes a practice involving going to a solitary spot and acting out whatever comes to your mind. Esbiang Ba is a variety of teachings for training ba the body, speech and mind. The training of the body entails instructions for physical posture. The training of speech mainly entails recitation, especially of the syllable hum. The training of the mind is a Madhyamaka-like analysis of the concept of the mind, to make clear that mind cannot arise from anywhere, reside anywhere, or go anywhere. They are in effect an establishment of emptiness by means of the intellect. <laughs> <laughs> Meditative practices According to Alexander Berzin, after the preliminary practices follow meditative practices, in which the practitioners works with the three aspects of Rigpa, the three samadhis ting nge d -zin -g -s -u -m are practiced, in which the practitioners works, in the imagination, with the three aspects of Rigpa. Basis Samadhi on the authentic nature the meditator is absorbed in an approximation of Rigpa's primal purity. It is a state of open receptiveness which is the basis for being able to help others as a Buddha. Path Samadhi illuminating everywhere Lam Kun Snang Bai Ting Nge D Zin, Snang Ting, being moved by compassion, the meditator is absorbed in an approximation of Rigpa's responsiveness. Resultant samadhi on the cause. Bras bu rgui ting nge d zin, rgyu ting. The meditator is absorbed in the visualization of a seed syllable, which brings the result of actually helping limited beings. Semdzin the Dzogchen meditation practices also include a series of exercises known as semdzin, which literally means 
to hold the mind, or to fix mind. They include a whole range of methods, including fixation, breathing, and different body postures, all aiming to bring one into the state of contemplation. Main practice Trekcho The practice of Trekcho Craig's chod, cutting through solidity", reflects the earliest developments of Dzogchen, with its admonition against practice. In this practice one first identifies, and then sustains recognition of, one's own innately pure, empty awareness. Students receive pointing out instruction Sem's creed, NGO's sprod, in which a teacher introduces the student to the nature of his or her mind. According to Sokni Rinpoche, these instructions are received after the preliminary practices, though there's also a tradition to give them before the preliminary practices. Jigma Lingpa divides the Treksho practice into ordinary and extraordinary instructions. The ordinary section comprises the rejection of the all as mind, mind as empty approach, which is a conceptual establishment of emptiness. Jigma Lingpa's extraordinary instructions give the instructions on the breakthrough proper, which consist of the setting out of the view LTA ba, the doubts and errors that may occur in practice, and some general instructions thematized as the four ways of being at leisure. Cog BZ Hag. The setting out of the view tries to point the reader toward a direct recognition of Rigpa, insisting upon the imminence of Rigpa, and dismissive of meditation and effort. Insight leads to Nyamshag. Being present in the state of clarity and emptiness. Topic Togol. Togol thought R G A L means spontaneous presence, direct crossing, direct crossing of spontaneous presence, or direct transcendence. The literal meaning is to proceed directly to the goal without having to go through intermediate steps. Togol is also called the practice of vision, or the practice of the clear light It entails progressing through the four visions. The practices engage the subtle body of psychic channels, winds and drops the practices aim at generating a spontaneous flow of luminous, rainbow colored images that gradually expand in extent and complexity. Togol is an innovative practice, and reflects the innovations of the Mangid cycles in Dzogchen, and the incorporation of complex tantric techniques and doctrines. They are an adaptation of tantric perfection phase. Techniques RD Zog's rim, as outlined in the early 11th century Indian tantric Kalachakra cycle. The Wheel of Time, which was probably a direct inspiration for the seminal heart. Topic: <inaudible> Rainbow Body. LHUN grub practice may lead to full enlightenment and the self-liberation of the human body into a rainbow body at the moment of death, when all the fixation and grasping has been exhausted. It is a nonmaterial body of light with the ability to exist and abide wherever and whenever as pointed by one's compassion. It is a manifestation of the Sambhogakaya. Some exceptional practitioners such as Pamamsambhava and Vimalamitra are held to have realized a higher type of rainbow body without dying. Having completed the four visions before death, the individual focuses on the lights that surround the fingers. His or her physical body self liberates into a nonmaterial body of light with the ability to exist and abide wherever and whenever as pointed by one's compassion. See also Notes equals equals quotes